Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to look into today is the mysterious case of Marta del Castillo who was a Spanish student that actually went missing in 2009. This was a suggested case so thank you for that, I appreciate any suggestions you guys have and if you have any more of course let me know and I will look into them for you. Marta del Castillo Castanueva was born on the 19th of July in 1991 to her mother Ava and her father Ant Antonio and they all lived in Seville in Spain. Now something I couldn't really find about much about was her childhood, which I think is important to try and find out about these people. You know, it's not just all about what happened to them. You want to know the kind of person that they were. I couldn't really find much about her in general, just that as a teenager, she enjoyed the things that a typical teenager would. So she had lots of friends. She loved socializing. She'd go on social media, just general things that anyone would do of like normally of like a teenage age. And apparently at the time of this case happening in Spain, they used to use a social networking site called Tonetti. I personally have never heard of it, but that is what my researchers found that that is what they used at the time. So she had a relationship. Well, at the time of this occurring, he was actually her ex by then, but she was in a relationship with Miguel Carcano. Apologies if I pronounce any of these wrong. I am terrible with pronunciations. I find Spanish particularly difficult. They pronounce words and letters so differently to like other languages. So I'm really sorry if I get any of these names wrong. I have searched them up and I have put them in Google Translate and yet here I am filming and I'll probably still get them wrong. So I really, really apologize for that. Just have to bear with me. Anyway, Miguel was 19. And as I said, the pair did eventually end up splitting up, but I believe they still were kind of seeing each other. I don't know how the ins and outs of that relationship. I do not know whether they were friends, whether they were still, I don't know, like seeing each other in a romantic way or like friends with benefits. I have no idea, but I believe that they were still like talking and would go and meet up and things like that. That was normal for them. Now her mother Ava really didn't like Miguel. She basically said that he had the profile of a domestic abuser and she really didn't want a daughter to be with him and that was just kind of the instinct that she got off, off of him. On the 24th of January in 2009, Marta lived with her parents in the San Carlos Tataceros area and that afternoon at around 5pm, she left the house with the intent of going meeting some friends. So she leaves the house at 5 p.m. She tells her parents that she's gone meeting some friends. At the time, she was actually talking to one of her best friends that was called Sylvia Fernandez. And they were just like generally chatting away, you know, and at the time, I believe they were using Messenger to talk over like the internet. And so they're just generally chatting. And then Marta sends her this one last message, which I'll put up on the screen, like what she exactly sent. So obviously it's gonna be in Spanish. But she sends this final message and then she suddenly leaves the chat. So correct me if I'm wrong and I apologise if I am. I have roughly translated this. I've searched it up. I don't know whether they're using like text speech like at the end because that doesn't really translate. But looking into it, it translates as... Fatty, I leave you because El Meeg is downstairs and I'm gonna talk to him. I will call you later and tell you about it, love you. Now El Meeg is actually a nickname for Miguel, so obviously right there and then she's talking about Miguel, so she's saying that she's gonna go downstairs and she's gonna have a chat to him. So again, although they were no longer together, it seems like they were meeting up like they were friends or something. I don't know, again, their relationship, how what it was, but that was who she was gonna talk to. So it's now getting later and later, Marta's parents are getting worried because she has not come home. She left at five. It is, time is getting on now and they've not heard anything of her. So they try to ring her, they try to ring her several times. Her phone is still on at this point and she doesn't answer. She doesn't call back, she doesn't text back, nothing. And she doesn't answer the phone. And they begin to worry. So what they do, like anybody would, is they begin calling around her friends because again, she was going out to meet friends. Surely one of them must know something. Maybe she has got, you know, caught up in something, doesn't realize the time and hasn't come home yet. So anything could have happened. So they bring her friends 
and nobody seems to really know very much. Miguel says yes, she was here, but he left her at the front, like the front entrance of his apartment block at 9.30 and that was the last time that he had seen her. So he, according to him, he doesn't know what had happened to her after that. Ava, of course, didn't really like him in the first place, so she was suspicious of him and she never really trusted him wholeheartedly. So she basically said to him that if anything bad had happened to her daughter, she would get the police on him straight away. The next day, well, it's like early hours in the morning, they try ringing her, they try finding her, but at this point her phone has now been turned off. They decided that they weren't going to wait any longer to report her missing to the police and they did it at 2am. So the police didn't really have that much to go on. All they had was what the parents knew was that she was going out to meet friends and then obviously Miguel claimed that he had last seen her at half nine and then that was it. There was also like a testimony from a neighbour who said that they saw her standing in a doorway waiting for somebody and that was pretty much all they had to go off initially. The family also began receiving, as word got out, they began receiving these anonymous phone calls who said that they had seen Marta in Jerez de la Frontera and in Cadiz, but these were looked into and it was found that it wasn't actually Marta. At this point in the case, the neighbourhood pretty much already knew that Marta was missing, so her family straight away went on the social media website. They was sharing a photo out there. They were saying like, have you seen Marta? She's missing, etc. And so it got out pretty quickly within the close neighbourhood that she was actually missing. So obviously everyone was looking out for her. And then that helped with the searches for her too because the more people knew about it, the more people were on it and were out there looking for her. So pretty much everyone in the neighbourhood and everyone that knew Marta was out searching for her except from Miguel. He, he was not searching for her. What he was actually doing was moving out. Yeah, so this person who, you know, he supposedly loved, kind of, you know, they had a relationship. He cared for her. They were still meeting up. They were friends at the very least. Uh, yeah, well, he's not looking for her. He's instead moving in. So he moves out of his apartment that he lived in with his brother. He then moves into the house with like his girlfriend, I believe, and her family. Now his girlfriend, sorry if I pronounced this wrong, her name was Rocio PG. And from what I could find, it said that she was 14 years old which I don't get because obviously that's like illegal and stuff. But yeah, if I've got that age wrong in any way whatsoever, I apologize. It was the only age that I could find for her. So I assume that it's correct, but I don't, I don't understand why a 19 year old is going out with a 14 year old. Cause that's just, it's not even legal unless it's legal in Spain. I don't know the laws in Spain, but I assume not. I don't know. Either way, he moves in with this Rocio and her family. So he's left his apartment, he's moved in, and he's not searching for Marta. Days passed after her disappearance, and they've searched like everywhere that they can think of, but unfortunately, they just didn't find anything. Five days go by, and Marta's family managed to organize this kind of demonstration. So I believe at first there was around 2,000 people in attendance of this demonstration, which is amazing. All of those people there to try and support the family to try and find Marta and get her home. They of course asked for the return of Marta. They made this slogan for her which was we are Marta and so they would use that and it became you know like a pinnacle thing in her case that what was associated with her because it was like so big by the end of this demonstration they had like over 3,000 people in attendance so it just grew over kind of the course of it and people were just using the slogan we are Marta and asking for her to either come home or be returned home or just any information on the whereabouts whatsoever. They were kind of protesting in the streets, you know, and and they just wanted a home. Her friends were going out and they were looking and so they decided to look in Miguel's apartment because according to him, you know, she was there. That was the last place that people knew that she was. Nobody really saw her after that. And so, you know, it might have been the last place that she was. So they go over there and when they go in, well, they find this, it's quite suspicious because the whole place smells like bleach and ammonia. So somebody has been using bleach and ammonia to clean up that apartment. And why? Why would you need to use bleach to clean your apartment and ammonia? So profusely that you can literally smell it everywhere. 
very, very suspicious. Of course, they did have the suspicions of Miguel anyway, and so that just kind of amplified it. They brought him in for questioning several times, and he just denied everything. He just stuck to his story that, you know, 9.30, last Sarah, that's it, that's me, I'm done. Don't know anything else. So Rocio, his girlfriend, came forward to the police and she said that she had actually seen blood on his pants. So that, yeah, that wasn't looking good for him. And that paired up with the bleach and ammonia smell. They obviously go and look in the apartment. They search around with Luminol and guess what? They find this big pool of blood in the bedroom. They also found like this blood stain on his jacket when they searched. And when it was tested and it came back, that was confirmed to be Marta's blood. So they knew he had done something to her. Something very, very bad to her, but they just didn't know what and where she was now, if she was still alive, which was probably highly unlikely at this point. On the 14th of February, after being presented with Rocio's statement of the blood, after being presented with the forensic evidence that they had against him, he couldn't really deny it. He eventually broke down and he admitted to murder. According to Miguel, on the 24th of January, Marta had come round and they began arguing. So apparently this argument was over Rocio, like he was going out with her, but yet he was still having some sort of relations with Marta and she basically threatened to tell Rocio about them two still seeing each other unless he broke it off with her. Apparently, as a result of that, he picks up this big massive heavy ashtray and he smacks her over the head with it. He smacked her on the left side of her head on the peritial bone. I believe that's how it's pronounced, but I'm not sure. But it's just kind of here. And apparently that instantly killed her. He then calls his friend from a payphone because he wants help moving her body. You know, he's not going to call the ambulance. He's not going to call anything like that. He just wants to cover it up immediately. His friend was called Samuel Benitez Perez and around he comes to help move this body. I mean, if you get a phone call, like of your friend saying, I need to move a body, I'm sorry, it's not funny, but would you do it? No, you'd be straight ringing the police. So I don't understand that because I would not be helping anybody move a body ever. Like you'd just be ringing the police and dubbing them in. You wouldn't be helping them. But yeah, he helped. They then apparently threw her body in the Guadalcavia River. Apologies again if I've said that wrong. I am guessing I have. I will put a spelling up for it so that you guys can see it and probably pronounce it correctly because I've probably butchered it. But yeah, they put her in at this, there was like this point that was called Chaco de la Pava and that is where they kind of, well, he claimed that he put her body in. The police really didn't think that he was telling the whole truth and... So basically, this kind of proved it. He claimed that he moved the body with his own vehicle, okay? Which is fair enough. You've got a car, put her in the boot, dump her kind of thing. It makes sense that, you know, that's plausible. But he had a moped. And so he was claiming basically that him, Mig no, not sorry, Miguel, that is him, Samuel, and Marta's now dead body, we're all on this moped and he drives it to the river and I, I believe the river wasn't that far so I'm not saying he drove for miles but he drives it to the mo to the river and then he dumps her. So police actually did a test in on this moped because it's kind of, you don't really think that a moped could transport three people and I know one of them was obviously deceased at the time but surely that would make it harder. They can't keep themselves upright, they can't hold on so to try and hold a person onto a moped that was deceased must have been you know really difficult and so anyway they look into it and they do all this testing on it and they basically say that the moped was definitely not stable enough to take all three of them even if one of them was deceased so he definitely didn't use his moped to transfer at least all of them at the same time which is what he claimed in addition to him being arrested in total well, there was another four people arrested. So in total, there were five people arrested with regards to Mansa's case. And their names are as follows. This was came to light as he began talking about his accomplices involved in the case. And so they were Francisco Xavier Delgado Moreno. And that was his brother, 
Maria Garcia Mendaro, which was his brother's girlfriend. You've got Samuel Benitez Perez, who of course I've already mentioned was his friend. And then you have Francisco Xavier Garcia Marin. And this Francisco was known as an alias as El Cuco, which is how I'm going to refer to him because obviously his brother and El Cuco have the same name and it, it can get pretty confusing who I'm talking about. So I will refer to him as El Cuco because of that and apparently he was a pretty like violent and not a very nice man apparently. So the biggest question in this case at the you know at the time was where was Marta's body? They knew that she was deceased. He admitted to killing her but he claimed that her body was in the river and so that is where they search so they go they search this river they end up with like 218 officers from the police unit the civil guard which had this underwater specialist unit and they used them they even had these military emergency unit all searching this river they ended up using 22 vessels three jet skis two helicopters 13 scent hounds and this sonar and specialized like underwater underwater body equipment that could kind of search the depths i guess i don't really know and that was loaned to them by the dutch police so they had all of this technology they had all of these people and these bodies and they were searching that river a dock engineer also like provided this rake like thing that he had designed and it basically scrapes the bottom of the it's kind of the mud all at the bottom so if her body had sunk or if they'd weighed it down or something like that you know when it got caught up in this mud it would scrape it all away and so you could sift through that as well so even with all of that they just didn't find anything they began testing so they got pig carcasses and they made them weigh 50 kilograms i assume was similar to Marta's weight otherwise why would they make them weigh 50 kilograms so they made them weigh 50 kilograms and they put them in three different sections into the river and each time they put them in the body the pig carcasses wouldn't end up surfacing and they would be floating on the top of the water in like a general area so they would always end up i don't know if the current kind of took them to that area each time but they ended up on this specific stretch of riverbank which was 20 kilometers long so obviously they focused a lot of their search on there too because that is where these these pig bodies kept ending up and so possibly if Marta was in there then maybe that's where her body would have ended up However, no trace of Marta's body was ever found in that river. So because of that, they began working on the theory that possibly because it took him so long to actually confess to her murder and then, you know, where he dumped her, that maybe her body had actually been taken out to sea before they even got to searching that river. Whilst completing their searches, they would also search over 40 wells, canals, sewerage plants, pipes, you know, you name it, they were looking like everywhere they could, especially to do with water because apparently that was where she was dumped. On one occasion, in one of the pipes in like an irrigation canal, they found this blood-stained cloth, or at least what they thought was a blood-stained cloth. They sent it off for testing, but it came back that it was just painted red, which... I don't know why but yeah it, was, it wasn't blood at all it was just like red paint unfortunately so they thought that that could have been tied to Marta but it ended up you know not being anything okay so let me just say Miguel changed his story like numerous times you will see I'm not gonna put them all in but he changed it quite a lot of times so pretty much we don't really know what happened to Marta you know I guess it's like the boy who cried wolf even if he did tell us the truth or one of them is the truth, who's going to believe him? And you will you will find out why, trust me. You've also got the other people involved. So you've got like El Cuco who later claimed that he only turned up when Miguel was wrapping up the body with his brother there and Samuel there. So you've got all these people involved who basically don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to incriminate themselves. So they're going to say all this stuff as well. So that along with Miguel changing his story, it's just it's just a mess it really is so yeah he claims that he got gets there and they're wrapping up the body and basically they said to him if you tell anyone basically threatened his family and then they told him that he needed to stay behind clean up the apartment whilst they took the body out and dumped it
we're now on to the 18th of March and Miguel is obviously in like court and things like that and during a reconstruction he requested to recant his previous testimony and he decides that he's going to make a new one and he blames the murder on El Cuco. So you've got El Cuco blaming it on him and you've got him blaming it on El Cuco and yeah again you it's just a mess but he basically claimed that El Cuco strangled her in the living room whilst Miguel was drunk and high in the bedroom and then afterwards he phoned his friend so that he could dump the body and this time he didn't dump it in the river, he dumped it in a dumpster close by. Miguel said that he felt pressurised by the police to give them that first testimony and you know that is why that one was a lie and now this one is the truth of course, this one's definitely the truth. And because of his new statement the search team were alerted, they were moved kind of from the river to the Montemara Concia landfill and it's near Alcala de Guadilla just in case her body had been put in a dumpster like he was now claiming. It was put to the other suspects. You know Miguel was now claiming a totally different story that he basically wasn't too involved, he didn't kill her and so they put it to them to gauge their reactions and see what they would come back with and ask them to make their statements from that. And then people started coming out with that they basically weren't even at the apartment that day at all and so again a mess. El Cuco's lawyer said that Miguel's new statement was a joke and that his client was innocent. Of course he was. Everyone's client is innocent. Some believe, including Marta's family, that one of the group members' fathers actually worked in biological waste and that they possibly then helped the child to get rid of the body with all the knowledge that they had of, you know, disposing of it. Apparently there's some talk of an incinerator somewhere and that maybe her body was incinerated and if that is the case then she will she will never be found unfortunately. So now we are at his third change of events. Yes, his third. On March the 19th he decided that he was going to recant again. When faced with like this unbelievable, pretty much unbelievable reconstruction that they made, this time he claimed that he had been drinking, that he had been doing drugs, smoking weed, I guess, I don't know, smoking something, with Samuel and Del Cuco. Apparently around midnight the two males decide that they're going to try and have sex with Marta and she of course resisted, she didn't want to. And so they beat her, they took her to the bedroom where they threatened her with a narrow narajeva, a narajeva. Again, sorry for my pronunciation. Basically, it's this traditional Spanish fighting knife that's foldable, I think. I'll put a picture of it up. So they threatened her with that, and of course, you know, under the threat of a weapon, she stopped resisting and they sexually assaulted her. Afterwards apparently they then tied her to the bed with insulating tape and an extension cord. Miguel then apparently punched her hard enough to make her bleed and they all strangled her together. The body was put into two trash bags, I guess kind of one covering the bottom half, one covering the top and I don't know, tied up in the middle. They then put her in a wheelchair, they wheeled her out to the dumpster and they put her in the bin whilst El Cuco got rid of the Narajeva in the sewer. So he got rid of that whilst they got rid of the body. Again, he was saying that this time he dumped her in the dumpster. Even though they weren't entirely convinced by this, yet again, I'm going to refer to the boy who cried wolf. He's changed the story three times now. Who even knows what's right and what's wrong on this? Who even knows if he's ever going to tell the truth? But Things did kind of fit with this one a bit more. So they found the Narajeva in the sewer at the front of the apartment. So that made sense. If he's threatened her with it and he's got rid of it in the sewer, it's there. You know, it is there. So they also found the guy's DNA in the bedroom and they found two of the guy's DNA on the hand kind of rails of the wheelchair. So that kind of also fit in too. They also, they did have as well a testimony from one of Miguel's neighbours saying that he had met Miguel as he's going back to the apartment and he had a, an empty wheelchair. He was wheeling an empty wheelchair. So it kind of fit. Also, apparently the people that actually witnessed him giving this testimony said that once he'd finished, he for the very first time looked at the magistrate like dead in the eye and he kind of looked relieved, like he had finally taken a load off his shoulder. So, shoulders. I believe at that point his lawyer renounced to continue re representing it. I'm not sure as to why on that one though. 
When he asked why he, you know, why he claimed that he disposed it in the river, he said that he told the police what they wanted to hear back then. He also denied any involvement of his half brother, so he basically said that his brother left at around 8.30 and that was before any of this happened apparently. So he was trying to put him in the clear. So going back to the tip, if he has dumped a body in the bin, and that sounds awful, but that, I guess that's what he did, that's what he's claiming he did. Between that time of him admitting that and kind of them searching, so they did obviously search the tip, 65,000 tons of waste had been dumped there since then. And that would make it so difficult to find a body in there. Like, it would have been so hard, especially if she's wrapped up in black bags. So they would have had to search through all that trash, well, as much as they could, for as long as they could. And it's not like you see, you're going to see some hair sticking out or a hand because she's actually apparently inside black bags as well. So it was just really, really difficult. They spent 32 days searching through 60,000 tons of waste and they found absolutely nothing. Landfill employees and police were all there. They were all searching for over a month, but they just didn't come up with anything. Whether a body was even there in the first place, I don't know. Now, they said that they they tested the bin that they claimed that they dumped her in and it didn't have any DNA, like human DNA, on the inside of it to say that anybody was ever in there. Now, I know in Spain, at least some regions of Spain, they have these huge bins and I don't believe that they move, so I believe that it is the same bin that stays there all the time. So, obviously, if it is and if it's the case in that region, then they could test the bin to see whether any human DNA was in there because it would definitely be the same one. So I don't know whether they actually do that or whether the bins would get exchanged at some point, like they take it away and put a different one there. I don't know. But as far as I'm aware, I believe that it's the same bin. So obviously that is why they tested it. Eventually, police did conclude that Miguel hadn't even put her in the dumpster at all. Again, they just don't know at this point, like he's river dumpster he's just telling them anything and everything and they also assume that he falsely confessed to rape because he wanted a bench trial instead of a trial by jury on the 16th of january in 2012 miguel carcano was sentenced to 20 years in prison and he was also made to compensate Marta's family with 350,000 euros 340,000 euros sorry for her murder he was acquitted of every other charge. All the other people, oh, I believe as well, he wasn't allowed to live in the area of Marta's parents. Like, you know, if he got, when he got out for the next 30 years, he wasn't allowed to be in that, the same region. All of the others accused were eventually acquitted of charges because of lack of evidence. El Cuco had like this separate trial and he was charged with, he wasn't charged with murder, but he was charged with something else. Oh, but it doesn't end there. Like, you would think Miguel's been charged, he has been sentenced, and that is the end of it. No, 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 that is not the end of it. So now he's going to give his sixth version of events in 2013. Yes, he's, he's now six. So he has given six stories as to how he killed and disposed of Marta. Or not even him, like, other stories he blames it on other people. Miguel told police that Francisco was the real and only killer, that after the brothers were arguing, Marta tried to get into the middle of it and he pistol whipped her and then killed her and then they all went and buried her body at a farm called La Maja Obla, Uber? La, La Maja Loba, returning after 24 hours to put lime over her body. The prosecution considered this story to be unbelievable like pretty much all of his other stories. Despite that, they obviously went and searched the farm. They looked around, you know, they have to. He's now giving them a different place as to where he's buried her. And so they went there, they looked, but again, they just found nothing. In 2014, searches were made at an illegal dump site, which was actually close to where he claimed that he dumped her body in the river in his like first story. And they recovered human bone fragments at that site. So her family, not excited, I'm not going to say that, but they wanted her home, they wanted to find her body so that they could lay her to rest, and so they got the hopes up, hoping that this would be their daughter, that they could finally, finally bury her, but unfortunately, they were dashed when they found out that this person 
it was two or three people that were there and they had been dead for a hundred to two hundred years at this point so it wasn't matter in 2015 antonio matter's father offered miguel eighteen thousand euros and basically promised that he would not try and seek any like additional charges against him if he would pinpoint the exact location of matter's body but miguel refused i guess it's just one big game to him he and he took a life and now he's just playing with them he's playing with their emotions he's toying with them and he will not give them the location of a body. On the 7th of February in 2017, Katuja Rowing and Kayak Centre was like, identified as this likely area for someone to dispose a body in. This was come to light by a criminologist and they, they searched this, ending that search on the 24th of January. So they began it on the 7th, they're now on the 24th. They call it quits because again, they find nothing related to Marta's case. As you can see, her family is still actively trying to find her body and my heart truly, truly breaks for them. They have lost their daughter. She was 19 years old and she was ripped from them and ripped from this world and her life was stolen. And now all they want, all they pray for after all these years is that they can finally find her remains, bring her home and bury her and lay her to rest. That is literally all they want in life right now and I'm not entirely sure that they will ever be granted that piece. I truly believe that Miguel will never give away her location. Like, he offered him money, and I mean, when he gets out of prison, if he ever gets out, you know, he would have that as like a, a fund to help him in life, but he refused. He, I don't know whether her body is recoverable, like maybe she was incinerated, or who knows? Some people end up dismembering them and spreading out the body or burning them. Maybe something like that happened and there is nobody to be found and he's just toying with them. Either way, I don't think that he will ever tell them. If there is a body to be found, I don't think he'll tell them where it is. If there isn't, I don't think he'll tell them that there isn't a body to be found. And if he did, would they even believe him anyway? Who knows? Or maybe she is in that rubbish tip and even though they searched thoroughly, they didn't find her and you know, he was telling the truth on that and that they're just probably not going to find her at this point. It's just really sad. This poor young woman lost her life and for what? Nobody even knows because of how many times he changed his story. Nobody knows what's the truth. Nobody knows anything. Her family are desperate to get home. So please, 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 if you know anything about this case, you know, maybe you saw something that you didn't think was relevant and watching this video, you think that now it might be relevant, please tell someone. Please tell the relevant authorities because all Antonio and Ava want is for their daughter to be buried at home, wherever, just to bring her home and finally lay her to rest like she deserves. Let's get her brought home, giving her family the one thing that they want the very most right now. So yeah, that is the end of the case. Give me a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel for similar content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Marta del Castillo Casanueva. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.